everyone welcome to my channel Mimi's makeup in this video I'm gonna show you how to make this beautiful bulky hat it's a bulky velvet hat it's really amazing I love it so much so if you love a bulky hat of a bulky stuff you're gonna love this one it's so easy especially for beginners if you don't know anything about crochet this one is for you and it's so amazing especially in the very cold weather it really makes you so warm and so beautiful I love it so much and so amazing and actually I love the color so much so if you want to see how I made this beautiful bulky velvet hat please keep watching okay hi everyone again so let's start our tutorial as you can see this is the yarn i'm gonna use in this video it's really really thick velvet yarn it's just like burnet velvet yarn you know the thick one just like it and i don't know the brand of this one but it, it, it came in this packaging so this is how it looks like and this is the yarn i'm gonna use in this video i love the color so much it's so amazing and so soft and beautiful um this one is about like um 500 gram so this um skin is about like 250 gram i'm gonna use one skin in this video and i'm gonna use um 10 millimeter crochet hook with this one um both are 10 so i was deciding which one i'm gonna use so i'm gonna use the middle one it was nicer actually with this yarn so let's get started so first thing this is the beginning of my yarn and of course as usual we're gonna make a slip knot to start our work now I'm repeating my um, slip knot because I really want to have a nice tail so I can hide it after I finish my cap or my hat so as you can see this is my slip knot so let's get started so adding it to my crochet hook and start making chains i'm gonna make 20 chains it's actually for me 20 chains was more than enough it was really nice of course you can increase or decrease the number of chains if you like but for me i have kind of a, like a smaller head so 20 was enough for me to have the length of the hat that i want so i'm gonna finish 20 chains So here we go, I have 20 chains and it's very nice for me. And this is the length of my hat. And I'm gonna measure it actually, it was about 12 inches or about like 30 centimeters or like 33 centimeters, like something like that, but it's 12 inches. So it's like enough for me, it's just like the usual length that I always do my hats for and yeah i was just making sure it's 12 inches and it's nice okay and this is the hat that i'm gonna use it as a measure i'm gonna link in the card description box down below i have a tutorial how to make this beautiful velvet hat use like a finer kind of a yarn with for this one so it's linked in the card description box down below if you wanted to check it out and i'm gonna use it as a measurement for my velvet hat to make sure it's in the same length and width so let's get started So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, not gonna do anything else, I just have my 20 chains and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna skip the first chain and in the second chain from um, the 20 chains that I have, I'm gonna go inside just like that and grab the yarn from it just like this and then I'm gonna make a slip stitch, take that um, loop and take it from the other stitch that I have on my hook. You make slip stitch again, go in this loop and take grab the yarn and just take it again take this one from this loop just like that and this is the slip stitch actually the slip stitch that you use to finish any kind of a work when you connect two works together if you are working in a circle or something actually it's the like the smallest stitch you will ever do uh, because the first stitch is a single crochet and then half double crochet and double crochet and triple crochet this one is a slip stitch so it's kind of a very very small kind of a stitch but because we are using a really thick yarn you can see there is like an elevation in the work and as you can see here but still it's a very very basic stitch and it's really easy but as you're working with this yarn you feel that you are, you are doing something so actually what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna finish my row to complete the first row all of my work will be a slip stitch okay So 
So now I am on the last stitch of the last chain and again I'm making slip stitch. And here we go, as you can see, it's a very simple and very nice, you feel like you have a braid or something. And let's go to the next row. I'm gonna chain one and then flip my work. And as you can see, what we're gonna do, maybe it's kind of hard to see, but I'll, I will try my best, okay? So as you can see, we have every stitch have kind of a, this like of having a V or a seven kind of a figure um, in every stitch. So this is the front loop and this is the back loop. Usually we take both of loops, um, the both loops when we do um, a stitch. But what we're gonna do now, we're gonna work only on the back loop, which is this one here. We're gonna go in this one only, okay? So this is basically the work that we're gonna work on the rest of our hat. We're gonna slip stitch on the back loop, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the first stitch here and go grab the yarn and slip a stitch from the back loop only next we're gonna go to the back loop here and grab the yarn make slip stitch back loop again grab your yarn slip stitch and continue working like that until you finish this row and then we're gonna make a chain flip our work and continue as you can see why we're we doing that because we need to have this kind of a rich pattern or the ripped pattern that begin to appear i'm gonna speed up because i'm not gonna do anything like new i'm just gonna continue doing slip stitch on the back loop i'm gonna like work another two rows to show you how the pattern will look like when we finish it it's really easy actually really really beginner friendly if you know nothing about crochet this is a basic thing for you and it's so easy as you can see we have a little bit of elevation in the middle part and um, as I'm working, I begin to feel like it's a little bit shrinking, but so I'm just making sure it's the same length, so I'm not like repeating everything again. As you can see, after I just stretch it a little bit because I was just working and have it all in, all in my hand, so it felt like it's a little bit like smaller than I wanted, but actually the same length, which is good actually. So I'm gonna continue working the same way. And again, we are on the next row, which is the third row, doing the same thing. We are working on the back loop, only making a slip stitch in every chain. And as you can see, we're almost there. So I'm gonna repeat another row so you can see the pattern that I'm talking about, the ripped pattern or the ridged pattern that we want. So here we go. After I finished four rows, as you can see, I begin to have this kind of a elevated uh, rims or ripped pattern in between. It's really nice and when we finish our work, it looks so pretty, as you can see. And again, I'm making sure it's um, still 12 inches because um, I was so scared that it just become more like smaller than I wanted or shorter than I wanted. So I'm gonna continue the same work in until I finish the, the how many rows that I want. I'm gonna come back just in a minute to show you how many rows that I am gonna make and to finish my work. So let's continue and I'm gonna come back in a jiffy. Okay guys, so as you can see, this is after I finished my rows. I finished about like 35 rows. I'm gonna count the ridge bar, it's about 17 ridges or ripped um, like pattern. As you can see, I'm counting it, it's about 17. So it's about 34 or 35 and it's like this is a size for me. Of course, you can increase if you want. And as you can see, I finished or I... Um, stopped at the opposite side of my beginning this is my beginning and this is my ending i am on the opposite side and this is so crucial for um the finishing part which is the seaming part which we're gonna do right now so you have to um finish your work or stop on the opposite side from your beginning so this is my last row of course 
and I didn't fasten off, I didn't cut the yarn, still have some yarn actually. If you're gonna make a bigger one, you're gonna use a second skein, but for me, one skein was more than enough. I still have a little bit, which will be enough for me to finish my, uh, my hat. So as you can see, this is my starting yarn, and this is my last row. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna connect my starting yarn to the back loop of the last row. I'm not gonna do anything to the front loop, I'm gonna work all the work on the like the, the the back loop only okay the front loop will made the rigid part on the inner part of my work which will be the right side of the work okay so let's get started i zoomed in a little bit so you can see better as you can see this is my first chain from my starting chain and this is the last chain and what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take it to the other side just to slip it like this and here we're gonna start our work so I'm making sure it's tight enough so I continue working. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take the starting chain, the next chain, which is this one here. I'm gonna go in and then I'm gonna go to the back loop on the opposite stitch, the back loop only. And I'm gonna yarn over and take it through all three loops, just like that. I'm gonna make a slip stitch. So I'm gonna do the same pattern. I'm gonna make a slip stitch but connecting the starting um, chain with the back loop of my last row. And I'm gonna continue doing like that. So I'm seaming my hat to make it like circular. As you can see, just so easy. Going to the back loop and take the yarn, slip stitch as we go. So as you can see, I still have a little bit of elevation, it's not that obvious actually. And this side, which would be the wrong side of my work, and this will be the right side. This is a seaming, I still have the pattern, there is no um, difference actually, just a little bit of difference, but it's not that obvious. Of course you see it because you are working the work but no one will no nobody will see it so what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna continue like that until i finished my row i'm gonna go and slip stitch to my back loop from my front chain or my starting chain and i'm gonna continue all the way until i finish my work So as you can see, this is the wrong part. I just wanted to show you again. And this is how it's gonna look like when I just um, flip the rim like this. So I'm gonna continue until I reach the end of this row. So here we go, I finished my row and this is my work, how it's gonna look like. So that's it, this is the wrong part, so I'm gonna stay on the wrong side of my work. So I'm gonna go to the next step which is closing the top of my hat. Okay guys, as you can see, still on the wrong side of my hat and it's time to close the top of my hat which is the last step so this is the top of my hat that I'm gonna close because every yarn and everything is just in the side so this is where I'm gonna close it it doesn't matter but anyway this is where I'm gonna close it so as you can see I have my yarn and I have my tapestry needle my tapestry needle is the wider thing I have and it's time to take my yarn inside my tapestry needle and then I'm gonna fasten off first everything to make sure everything is perfect and ready to be closed. 
okay and now the next thing oh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna close everything okay we're just making sure everything is perfect so now it's time for a closure step so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go back and forth inside my work just like this on the, the bridge of this part just go back and forth there's no right or wrong here just go back and forth until you take the tail of your yarn or the rest of your nor of your yarn all the way around in a circle in a circle inside your work until you reach the starting point so that's what i'm gonna do right now i'm gonna take the yarn just like that and just go all the way around and i'm gonna come back in just a second to show you what i'm gonna do next As you can see I finished entering my yarn inside my work what I'm gonna do now I'm just gonna just grab the yarn and try to close my opening or the top of my hat very gently don't pull it too hard because the yarn is not that strong so take your time just very gently and just begin to squeeze that opening until it's like so tight as much as you can so what i'm this is what i'm doing right here just like spinning everything because it takes a little bit of time as you can see the the opening begin to be way smaller just taking my time and just adjusting everything And now what I'm gonna do after I make sure everything is so tight and perfect, I'm gonna just make two knots with my tail, which is the starting point, the starting tail, and make sure everything is perfect. I'm gonna make two knots to make everything fixed in place. Now I'm gonna leave my tail. And as you can see, I still have a little bit of opening just right here because of course, the hat is so bulky and I didn't reduce the number of the stitches so that's normal so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make kind of a crisscross and I'm gonna go inside the work just like this and there's no right or wrong you just go and grab like um, two yarn or, or something from this side and the opposite side just like this and just go and grab your yarn as tight as you can Okay, and again, I'm gonna make another just like criss crisscross to close this opening. making sure everything is so tight and perfect before I do anything else and make sure my opening is completely closed as you can see it's so closed and looks so perfect so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna again make another two knots and make everything fixed in place and secure and this is basically it of course this yarn is this extra yarn I'm gonna cut everything and hide the tail inside my work and everything will look beautiful but I just wanted to show you how it looks like okay of course this is the wrong side of my work this is how it looks like this is the finishing or the um, seaming part just right here if you can see it And this is the right side of my work of course and I hope you can see the seaming part if you can't that's perfect but this is the seaming part 
and as you can see it has a really nice ripped pattern looks so beautiful looks so even and the finishing is perfect i know it looks a little bit smaller but this is my head i have a kind of a small head so yeah this one is perfect for me of course you can adjust the number of the stitches and the number of the rows as you want but it's perfect for me so yeah this is my head i really hope you like it Okay everyone, this is for this tutorial. I really hope you like it and it was easy for you and you enjoy doing it if you did it with me. So um, yeah, if you love bulky stuff and if you want something really looks so beautiful and in the same time makes you so warm in very cold weather actually i tried this hat in uh, a day it was so so cold it was freezing actually but i was so warm because this really makes my head so warm so i was so warm and i was feeling so nice actually so i really love it it looks a little bit big on my head but actually it's so amazing i love it i love bulky stuff so this is for this tutorial i really hope you like it and you enjoyed it and of course as usual don't forget to comment like and subscribe and share the video with your friends if you like it don't forget to follow me on instagram and facebook these links will be in the description box down below and don't forget to hit the bell button so you have a notification every time i upload a new video on my channel and i'm gonna see you soon in my next video I love you so much. Bye.